listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. So the next question is kind of, <laughs> when you said do that shit, it was, it was perfect for the next question. <laughs> what is the real reason you, women, black women specifically, what is the real reason you celebrate the city girls, hot girls, only fan girls, strippers, and rapper baby mamas? I don't know about the rapper baby mama part. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like the city girls because they are honest. Real ass bitch, you a about a nigga, okay? I like them because <laughs> I like them because they like you get your money and dip. I mean, in all honestly, for years and we in my eyes, I felt like the guys got what they wanted and dip. So girl, get it back. And then, they being honest about it, that's how they want to live their life, like, that's how they want to progress, I support it. Do you, girl, and do you well. Um, who else you said? City girls? Hot girls. Your favorite? Well, I'm a hot girl. I do hot shit. And if you let me, I'm going to spend this income on an outfit. I love my hottie, like, I love Megan because... Sis about to graduate. I graduated. I don't know. I feel so. I feel like I can relate to Megan. And she a rapper, yeah, but she real life went to college. Like she lost both of her parents, and she pushed herself to be successful. She a brown skinned girl like me. She has a natural body like me. Like sis is just out here living her best life, having a good time. Like how can you hate on that? How? That's the life I'm trying to live. Titty girl, hot girl. Who next? Uh, you can throw Cardi B in there. Because I'm, I'm, I'm naming the people that a lot of black men complain about. Like, complain about women liking. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to shed some light on, like, okay. So men can finally understand, like, what, what's the real reason? Okay. So for Cardi, Cardi is controversial. C controversial? How do I say it? Is that right? Okay. But it's because Cardi speaks how she feels. And nobody can pick Cardi in a box. We like her because we don't want to be put in a box either. We're not all the same. Yes, yeah, she's loud and ratchet. And, you know, she got a sister named Hennessy. But she knows what she's talking about when she starts talking. And she's going to work hard. Sis came up in a strip club. She didn't sleep her way to the top. Like, she had pure, raw talent. And she made it to the top off that pure, raw talent. You cannot pick Cardi in a box. She gonna be who she is. You either gonna like it, you're gonna love it, or you're not. But she's going to still be who she, she is. Every woman wants to be that confident in themselves that it does not matter what anybody thinks. I am going to be who I am. Um, I don't know why me I hate that. <laughs> so it's 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 kind of um, it's empowering to see women do that unapologetically. Yes. Yeah. I might not want to be loud and boisterous all the time, but the fact that Cardi does it and does not care, it makes me feel like, you know what? I like that. I like that woman. She is who she is. Okay. And you said the rappers, baby mamas. Rappers, baby mamas, yeah. Because a lot of girls like, um, what's her name? Uh, Lil Baby's baby mama, what's her name? J Jada, Jada Waiter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like almost like she's a celebrity too. I don't understand. And what's her name? Thomas the Train. 
Money bag girls, girl. Um, uh, Ari. See, I don't really, I don't really know them well. Like, I don't follow their celebrity much to give much input on them. But I mean, do you think it's the same reason? I think if you are in that position already, you can relate well to that person. And I don't want to sound rude, but if you are a baby mama already, you can relate to the baby mama. I can't speak too much on that because I don't have that relation. But I feel like if there's a connection, maybe that's it. I don't know. The narrative is that women tend to prefer to like to skirt accountability and they're not trying to hear it from anybody and they're not used to hearing it from anybody. That's why like somebody like Kevin Samuels is so famous, right? So the question is, why do your friends support slash coddle each other's bad behavior? Who got bad behavior? <sighs> what do you mean? What do you all mean by bad behavior? Um, I think a lot of dudes don't feel like females call each other out on the shit that females do. Especially, well, if we're talking about black people, so black women don't call each other out on the shit black women do. It's almost, it's, it's almost always she did it for a good reason or she was put in, put in a bad position. And if she was in a better position, she would make better decisions. Whereas with guys, we don't get that same consideration. It's always niggas ain't shit, period. Whereas a woman, she, she only did this bad thing because da, 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 da. So the question now becomes like, are women actually having those accountability conversations in their friend group? Or is it more so like, do your thing, girl, live your life and what we hear. I'm trying to think to my friend Take groups. your time, take your time. And it, again, it doesn't necessarily have to apply to you, but help, help us understand a little bit of the female psyche. I hear y'all. And the fact that I have to really like think about it like this, it's a valid question. Um, I feel like we we kind of get both. You get the encouragement of bad behavior, but you do sometimes get, you know, the conversation of, sis, you could have done this better. There is an imbalance there, though. I think we do kind of encourage the bad behavior more. Um, Typically, if you have a group of girls, I say a group of five girls, it's probably only going to be one girl in that group that is going to hold other people accountable out loud. Why? I don't exactly know why. It's a lot easier to keep the peace <laughs> when you just kind of go with what's going. Um, I will say like I have I have a friend who kind of <laughs> held me accountable for decisions that I have made and honestly like the first time the first time it was like I was dating this guy who I should not have been dating holding on to it and sis was like well both of my friends at this point was like a full intervention where they would tell me, girl, you, you need to let that go. Like, it ain't going nowhere. You've been holding on to this for two years. There's still no commitment. Like, let that go. And I will say I felt the type of way. But I had to sit and think about, could I make better decisions here? Not every female is mature enough to sit down and think about, could I make better decisions here? 
in some scenarios, that could turn into a fight and the whole friendship is over because you tried to help your girl. Um, another situation, I was dating a guy and my love language is quality time and I didn't feel like he was giving me enough quality time. And my friend had to be like, sin. He does not have to be up under you all the time. Like He has another life to live outside of you. And I mean, it took me a while to even digest that and be like, okay, she right. But I mean, she was right. He had a whole nother life. Um, so like I said, out of a group of maybe five girls, you don't have maybe one who's willing to jeopardize the friendship to call you out and hold you accountable for your actions. Maybe it's a lot tougher because as we know, when females have these type of conversations, Friendship could be totally over. Now we got beef. Guys can have conversations like this and go play basketball. Somebody win the game. We squashed it. We going to get a break and fries. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's, we have too many emotions. But that's my answer. That's valid. Okay, so this, this is going to be the second to the last question. But it's, it's, it's probably the most valid question right now because Summer Walker's album just dropped, if you, you listen to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I listened to it on my way to uh, Columbia the other day. But um, the question is, why do y'all enjoy emotional extremes? Adele, Summer Walker, Jasmine Sullivan. Um, it seems like there is a market demand for female misery because it's relatable. Why is that? Well, there was a question for me. That's it. That's my favorite genre. Um, it is. That's my favorite genre. But it's not that I can always relate to it in life. It just. I felt her five years ago, like I was there. I was there with you. I felt her last week. I was there with you. Like when you have an emotion, yeah, you can move on from it, but you will always have had that emotion. So when these songs come out, you can go back to that moment and remember and relate to those songs. At least for me, that's how it is. Like, I could be in my happiest point of my life. But when I take my shower, I'm going to throw on some Sizzle. I'm going to throw on some um, Summer Walker. I'm going to listen to Janae. I don't, that's the type, those are the type of songs I like. Like, I really like the emotion within their voices. Like, you can feel their pain. Like, girl, yeah. I know how you feel that. Like, it's relatable whether you're in that moment in life right now or not. That's kind of fucked up. Oh, how? It's fucked up because, like... He'll about to walk around singing Jingle Bells all the time. No, I get that. But I'm saying, like, I think it creates a perverse incentive because these artists are people. And when they're going through their catalog or they're, they're seeing what their numbers are, it's like, it's better to be depressed because that's what the people want. It's better to be unhappy because that's what the women want to hear. So it's like when, um, when Adele lost all this weight, a lot of women were actually upset. <laughs> they were like, she's not going to have that same pain in her voice anymore. Yeah. It's like, that's kind of fucked up. Like, she's trying to better herself, and you want her to remain in misery because it creates an art that you like. So I, I wanted to, like, get a better, like, a broader understanding of, like, what, what's, what's under that? I don't know, maybe... And maybe we all have a bitter black woman inside of us that won't go away. Mm. You got to sing to her. I don't know. I really don't know, but I am a part of the crowd. That is my genre. 
Do you consider yourself a feminist? Yeah. Okay. So the question is, and again, this is black, right? I don't care about anybody else watching these videos. This is for black men and black women. This is the conversation. Great. I consider myself a black feminist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what's, I think the term is uh, femme noir. Oh. I think that's the new term that oh, they're throwing okay. around. So the question is, has feminism helped or hurt us? I think feminism hurt us initially because it was almost like a pillar to creating the strong woman. Um, you wanted women who are going to always stand up for themselves, always put up a fight for themselves and others. Um, <laughs> they want to work. I don't know why these people want to work. <laughs> they want to work. But I feel like black feminism is kind of helping. It's weird. Is it weird? Explain. I feel, I feel like it's helping because, yes, we're encouraging women to work, but not even just find something and work. Find something that you are good at and build on that. So if you're good at makeup, go out and become a makeup artist in your area or go above and beyond that. If you are a businesswoman, go be a businesswoman. I feel like black feminism is like find your niche, find what it is that you're good at and expand upon that. But in turn, it's still almost like, but be a woman. I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. It's like, do you, but still be a woman. Still go home to your husband and to your kids. Or go on dates. Be feminine. Get pretty. Dress up. Put your makeup on. Get your wig. You know, get your braids. Be a woman, but be a smart, bold woman. Not so much rioty, but just do that shit. Describe a hypothetical world without black men. Your truth. Something's there. Something's bubbling in your spirit. It's just going to be a cold, dark world. Trying to find a good analogy. Let me see. It seems like a small portion, like black men seem like a small portion of the world, like as if they're not important. But if you were to remove them the whole ordeal, it's it's a waste. Because I feel like black men get the short end of the stick a lot, whether it's from the black woman, the white man, or the white woman. Black men typically get the short end of the stick. But I don't think black men realize how much black women really depend on y'all. When, when we're out in public, Let's say we're hanging with our friends, and maybe this is just how I feel. When I'm out in public, I'm hanging with my girls. If I go somewhere and I know a black man that's there, I automatically feel safer. There's been times where I've gone like to a lounge or a bar, and I may run into my cousin automatically. 
somebody's gonna make sure I'm good if something were to happen. Um, literally last weekend, I went to a lounge and a friend of mine from the past, her ex came in and I don't even think anything happened. But at one point, like I look, looked across the room, he happened to look across the room to me and he mouthed, you good? And I was like, yes. Instantly felt safer. I hadn't seen this man in years. So I feel like in a hypothetical world where the black men didn't exist, the black woman would not be comfortable. Y'all, y'all are a headache at times, but in real life, we need y'all.